And our next guest says it may be time for this rally to take a rest. Let's bring in Tony Dwyer of Canaccord Genuity. Tony, great to have you with us. Hi, Mel. Thanks for having me. Um, what level of the market do you think is, is fair at this point? So typically when you break out of a trading range, if you remember, uh, we called it the frustration frustration phase mm -hmm. and we we're waiting for a break out of that to go into the tanks and banks um, tank, tanks being industrials uh, when you break out of a trading range typically technical analysis Carter and all the guys would tell you that you take the spread of that range and add it to the breakout point and that's your short-term target so that would have been 3150 because the market broke out at about 2850 or I'm sorry 2950 and it was a 200 point range so it exceeded a little bit but to Tim's point and everybody else's the the move in some of these um, value sectors has really been extraordinary for example the BKX since we upgraded to offense is up 31.9 percent the industrials up 20 percent equal weighted consumer discretionary up 21 percent so Mel I, th I think the real story here is that there's been two significant bull markets off the March low there's been the stay-at-home bull market that carried the mega-cap stocks and dominated the 30%-plus performance off the low. And then that 60 Minutes interview by the Fed was extraordinary. And that is the pinpointed time where you saw this move back into the economic reopening bull market. So I think there's really been two bull markets that have kept the index going. Hey, Tony, great. I'm, gl I'm glad you're with us. It's a good night for it. So obviously Stan Drunkenmiller, I think uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe it was May 12th or so, talked about the, the, the equities being the least favorable environment he's seen in his career. I'm paraphrasing. But today he basically came out and said he's humbled by it and he understands what's going on. You know, I, I feel that way as well, humbled. Um, but can this just continue based on the simplicity of money supply and dollar for dollar move with the S&P 500 and maybe you know as much as I like to make this complicated maybe it is that easy well it, but again guy it, it's been very different so if you're if you're in you know some of the big names like Microsoft right or even uh, Amazon or Google or some of those other names they haven't really done a whole heck of a lot since that um, FOMC meeting on April 28th and 29th it really it really has been a pause in that space as to everybody's point, you've seen this ramp in the cyclical spaces in the banks and tanks and, again, the equal weighted consumer names. So that it's really been two separate bull markets that have kept the index going. It's not the same stocks that just ramped and ramped and ramped and ramped. So I think that's a really important differentiator. And we found, like, for example, I'll give you, uh, you know, you guys all know me. I'm a data guy. The S&P 500 has been above the 50-day moving average. Um, more than 90% of the S&P 500 has been above the 50-day moving average. I think today is the 11th day. When I look back at the prior occurrences, it's not a tank. That never, that's, since 1990, that has never happened right before, um, right before you really go back into a bear market. It typically is closer to the beginning of a bull market, but it's also led to periods of consolidation. So, you know, our call has been that if, if you got, if you went all, all in on the economic reopening trade a couple of two, three weeks ago, it's not such a bad idea to expect a little bit of consolidation here. Hey, hey Tony, it's Dan. Um, quick one for you. Okay, so the last time the S&P 500 was here was the last week of February. At that point, um, you know, our country was starting to come to the realization of the economic disruption of this oncoming pandemic. Last year in 2019, the S&P 500 rallied 30 percent, but we had an earnings recession. Most strategists were expecting earnings to decline even this year in 2020. So we're back at these levels. We front loaded all that stimulus yep. and assistance. We know that there's massive headwinds. What do you do with the S&P 500? Because I'm sure you were cautious back then at those highs. Yeah, I downgraded the market in January, and we're back to those levels of both euphoria, not euphoria, um, optimism in many cases, a lot of the put call ratios, all those internal technical kind of sentiment gauges have gotten back there. And, you know, again, my, our call to get offensive, which, you know, I'm even taking a little bit of a pause here, that call to get offensive had nothing to do with the S&P 500. Dan, I have no idea. What do you pay for, for infinity easing? I, I mean, is it? My multiple assumption is 20 times should it be 22, 24, 25. Guys like me can make these numbers up all day long. But again, I think what I have to do is fall back to history and say, okay, what is the, potent, what is the markets telling us when they get this broad? And to Guy's point, like, I, I kind of felt 
scared a, a few weeks ago when we were upgrading, as, as Stan was saying, it's the you know <laughs> craziest market of all time. But the momentum is there. I think the momentum has probably played its course because, again, this, the second half of this rally off of that March low was in different stocks. So now you really have kind of two whole segments of the stock market that's had a hell of a run. And it may just be time again to go sideways versus bet down big or, or up big just for the next month or two. Tony, great to speak with you. Thanks for having me, Mel. Thanks so much. Tony Dwyer, Canaccord Genuity. Um, Tim Seymour, I'll go to you. Uh, on Friday, we had a special uh, show at 6 o'clock called Fast Money 5. And in that yes, we show, did. we it was asked very special. If, the, if the market were a song, what would it be? And I wonder, given that the rally has extended itself <laughs> um, and we are at record levels on the NASDAQ, if you want to change your song selection. Oh, good point. So to remind our audience who weren't tuning in at 6 o'clock, which is a great time to tune into Fast Money every once in a while over the summer, I chose the clashes. Should I stay or should I go? Uh, and I referenced if I stay, there will be trouble. And if I go, uh, it could be double. Um, and, and my point was this is a market that a lot of people have missed. It's been a wall of worry. And, and, and you don't necessarily want to hang on here because we're all talking about fundamentals being challenged. But there's a lot of money managers that get fired when they're missing a bull market, especially after a massive bear market. Not being in the market is where people have a lot of problems. So, no, I wouldn't change at all. Obviously, you know, what we did on Friday was something I didn't think we could con continue to do uh, even today just on a short-term basis. It looks very overbought. Um, but that song, which isn't one of their best, but um, I think it still says a lot. <laughs> I think you got a lot of blowback on Twitter for the choice of that song. Because you're sort of, you're like, it's not the best song. But I, anyway, uh, Guy, I will go to you as well. Well, this the, is your... the Clash are a great band, and they've done better than that. But okay, I'll let, all right, that's know, fair. Sorry. That's fair. I, I would. Uh, Guy, would you amend your song choice? I, I love my song choice. The Clash is a, the most overrated band of all time, in my opinion. And I won't amend it, but I'll add to it. Come you on. a Tom Petty fan? I know Tim is out of Jacksonville, you can't name Florida. Three songs. Is that correct, Tim? Well, I'll give you one. You Even the losers songs, get the lucky classic. sometimes. There you go, Mel. What? I'm sorry. What was the song again? Ooh. No, I Tom can't. Petty. Tom For Petty. For good reason. Tom, Tom Petty. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll play it in the outro. Sure. Even the losers yep. get lucky sometimes. There you ah. go. Ah.